Hey everyone, welcome back to Bricks at Home 2021. Uh, this is a live event on Saturday and Sunday from Brick Alley and London A Foles. Uh, we've seen some amazing Lego creations so far today. And now we've got a presentation from Digital to Bricks. And I'm going to hand over to Miguel for this one. Uh, there'll be a chance to ask some questions at the end. So please do put questions in the chat with three question marks at the beginning of them. Over to you, Miguel. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me to do this presentation. Uh, I still fail to see how this is a good idea, but I am going to try to, to give my best and perhaps spare, hoping that someone picking up some interest in building in, in digital. I'm going to talk to you about my personal experience, how I got uh, into the digital building. Um, and then uh, we'll go for the benefits, uh, the pros and cons of building in digital. And then I'll go to show you a practical example of what you can do with something digital and then bring it back to bricks. Um, when I started, when I left my dark ages, um, I didn't have any Lego from when I was a kid. Uh, it all started with my son again when he was born. And when he was about five years old, I purchased it the usual, you know, police car, the, uh, the fireman helicopter, and he built that. Uh, but I, I wasn't uh, really hooked into Lego again. Uh, and then we were passing a store and he saw the, I don't know if you remember this line, it was the speed racers uh, of the of the sets, um, it, it usually it brought just two cars of the movie, and he asked for one of those sets. And when I start building, helping him out because he was just five at the time, and I really got hooked again into Lego because those was not the the models, the car models that uh, I had when I was a kid. But then I had a problem. Um, I didn't have any Lego, so to build. Uh, which I just said the the few sets that my I bought to my son, and that was it. And I wasn't able to tear them apart just to to play with it. <laughs> you wouldn't find it very very amusing. Uh, so I turned back to to digital. And being a, an IT person, I searched around on web and find not only that there were some public. Um, parts available, some public libraries available, like LDRAW, of course. But I also find out about other people that um, had the same interests as I did. And one of those first peoples that I found out about on the web was Mr. Peter Reed, a Lego lover man, of course. And he had some amazing neoclassic space models. And he was the one who first brought me back into, into Lego because uh, I, was, uh, I was holding my son browsing to photographs on my lap on the internet and he saw one of Peter's models and he said, oh, dad, can we buy that one? And I explained to him that uh, it wasn't available to buy at stores. You, it was a, a gentleman from the UK who had imagined it and uh, had built it itself. And he said, okay, cool. So we can imagine one of our own. <laughs> and he wanted to, to do that. And I said, why not? Why not do it in digital? So I wrote an email to Peter Reed and it was, uh, his, his, his reply was really amazing. And he encouraged me to, to try it out. And so I start building in digital uh, with all the bricks that I didn't have, of course. Um, there are several suites out there of digital buildings. Um, I first started with ML CAD. Uh, I think it stands for Mike Lego CAD. Uh, it was the standard at the time. We were talking about, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. Um, but there are several suites, as I said. Uh, I then passed it over to Leo CAD for Leonard Zins, LDD, of course. And then the late Sergio Oriano, he built a, an impressive suite uh, that call, was called SR3D Builder. And it was really 
a good software suite, but in, unfortunately, since this is early, the, since it's died earlier, the software didn't um, get developed anymore. Bricks meet for those who are into Macintosh, of course. And then lately, Studio and my favorite LDCAD. Uh, of course, there are several benefits um, for building in digital. The first one that uh, uh, crossed my mind at the time was the budget. Uh, if you built in digital, you didn't have to purchase the parts or purchase sets to have the parts to build it. Um, so when uh, I started uh, doing the Peter Reed models in digital, um, of course that I, I didn't want to purchase the parts just to see how, how, it, how it was to be in, in real bricks. Um, the second, I think most obvious um, benefit is that the parts are always available. Uh, since you have the old library, there is really no need to, to purchase a specific part, just for instance, to try something out and then uh, looking or thinking later, mm, this doesn't cut the, the model, I won't use this part. Uh, of course, so what I was talking about in digital is also to much more easier to do uh, the trial and error parts. You can build something up in digital, uh, look at it, uh, you're not happy to it, so it's more easier to take it apart than in real bricks. And, or you can just, for instance, replace one part for another different part in all the model and stuff like that. And I can think of another great benefit, at least for me, since I live in a small flat in a small apartment, <laughs> it's better to store digital files and real assembled sets. <laughs> Uh, so you don't have to to put it up uh, space to display your sets. Um, you guys should check my living room. I have a very lovely, understandable wife. <laughs> um, and of course, there are also the, the drawbacks of building in digital. Um, gravity, as we were talking about earlier, about the that cover of the soccer stadium, and um, there was one colleague of ours that built uh, a soccer stadium that was three meters by three meters, and it had a cover of the stadium, and he made the cover with just one uh, stud uh, thick. So when we put the cover on a horizontal, there was not enough clutch power to hold all the parts together. So the cover just continuously broke over in very small parts. And of course, stability uh, in digital, everything is cool, everything is very stable. But of course, when you pass it to real bricks, you can see that, for instance, the clutch power of the parts is not good enough, or the geometry of the parts does not complete each other correctly, as you once saw on the, on the software suite. And this comes, of course, to the parts tolerance as well. Um, everyone has found out, of course, in their builds, um, for instance, with clips, tiles with clips, uh, when they're holding a bar all over the time, um, the clips tend to lose their grip. And sometimes when you start to build something in digital, you have to realize that this build, if you want to pass it to real bricks, it's not something that can be um, assembled for a long time because parts could or should uh, in time fall out if they are just uh, picked it up by a, a particular clip or some loose or uh, some not strong connections. Uh, and of course, for me, the biggest drawback of them all um, is you don't feel the Lego, you don't feel the plastic, you don't feel the ABS in your hands. And sometimes I'm really miss to, to have the, the feeling of just juggling around with parts. What I do right now is having some sort of, uh, of parts during the actual digital building process. Um, 
this allows me, for instance, when I have some questions or when I have some doubts, that the parts will be, um, they will be fitting snugly or it, if it will be uh, um, a good um, geometry when there are angles involved and stuff like that, to try it out first with real parts and then pass it to digital. Uh, what I have, um, I, I think I can show you guys. Um, let me see if I can share my screen just to show you this example that I'm talking about. I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to show you something that I was done in digital and pass it to Rio Bricks. Okay, I'm just going to share this one. So this is Donald's Duck car. Uh, I think some of you guys have already seen this in, in, in real bricks. And this was all done in digital. But what I was telling you guys about was to try it out, for instance, this, the, the rear view mirrors, as you can see here, this is very hard for me to call out in digital if this will work or not. So what I did was trying it out first with real bricks to see if it was a, a, a strong uh, connection. Since these parts, these light wish gray parts will only rest upon the, the tiles with grill and then they are locked into place by this double uh, curved slope. So this is something that when building in digital, you have to make sure because otherwise I'm going to try to share the, the, the application now again, otherwise um, you can find out that once you build it in digital uh, that you cannot build it in real bricks. So this is the, was the Donald Duck's car that was built in digital. Uh, I'm using the LDCAD um, suite software. Uh, it's done by Roland Marco. Um, this is my favorite suite, but of course you can use several others like Studio. Studio seems to be the, the most famous one right now. Hopefully, Lego, the Lego company will understand that using Studio with L Draw Parts library, and that's an open source um, library that you can find out in that, and then uh, making it um, a close format uh, file system doesn't make any sense. Um, you can, I can still open uh, with the with um, LDCAD or with MLCAD stuff that I've done uh, 12 or 13 years ago. While in studio, if they keep the file format closed, um, you cannot open up uh, just with studio. And if we pass through a phase like the LDD that it's not longer supported. Every single model, every digital model that you have, for instance, you cannot install the Lego Digital Designer now in a Windows 10 operating system. So you're stuck with the, your digital files and nowhere to open them or to, or to, to, to display the files. Um, one thing that also helps me out um, in building digital is, of course, the instructions uh, for the mini sets that we provided for the participants in, in the fan weekends. Uh, we have to produce several uh, mini sets. Let me see if I can show you guys one. Mini set. Okay. Um, 
So this is one of the models. I think I better share the complete screen because otherwise I will have to switch applications. So this will be, are you seeing this? So this is the one of the mascots of the screen and you have to produce the the instructions for all these sets. And it's not responding. Please be patient just for a little while. Nope. Welcome to Windows. <laughs> okay. Uh, these are not the instructions. Let me see for 2019. And you say instructions, there we are, it's okay. So in, meanwhile, let me open the file. So Google Drive, 2018. Get many sets. No, it was 2019. Sorry, my mistake. Mini set instructions, Greg. So, mini set, this is Greg. Yeah. And now, this is the instructions. Of course, this is also very much. Um, lightens the burden of doing instructions if you already have the digital builds. And this is mostly for what I use, the, the software of building Lego in digital, this time to produce several, several models from the, the from the smallest ones to the biggest ones. For instance, the mini sets are very small, uh, but well, we also, like I said, we talked about earlier um, about uh, a castle. It, this was the, the first national castle built by um, the Portuguese. And let me get it's the castle, so the complete castle. And as you can see, this is, or you should see soon, this is a large build. You can see by the loading time that it takes, I think it's about 80 to 85,000 parts. Mm. You can check here how many parts there is. 82,000 parts. And it's all built in digital. This, this castle was already displayed, I think, in, in Bricktastic in 2017 or 2018, I'm not sure. And, and it's really, uh, you know, it's a compliment. It's, it's, it does not share, it's not, it does not substitute handling the real bricks, but, but it's a substitute, a compliment of, after all. And that takes me to the, if you want to see something from the, what means to pass from digital bricks to real bricks. I've chosen this last model. I am still waiting for some parts on bricklings and some orders to finish it, the, the actual build. But here it is, the DeLorean. Um, you can, let me see if I can show this. Mm, yeah like this, so from home. 
Yeah. So for instance, let me just zoom in so I can show you what I was talking about part tolerance. Um, in the seat over here, you can see that, that this plate, this one by two plates, you see the edge, it sticks out to the other part below. I'm going to try to change my webcam now. But you will see that at the end of the web. I'm going to try to put it here. So this is what you must check on digital and physical. Because on the digital part, you could see that the, it has a conflict here, a position conflict. But then in real life, uh, it's not. Uh, you can have it all over, and it will be just a cool seat for the for the for the DeLorean. Well, this part of the DeLorean, I I tried to add as much um, playability that I was able to to add a lot of accessories and to have a lot of cool stuff so that you could uh, so that you can you could add to the build so we have the the part when they go back in to the west to put over the hood the doors open and close of course there are some also some extra tires in red and that could be used to to stick it here and some extra tires that you could use to make the car fly as well you also have the plutonium box the vcr camera and the actual part here for the receiving the plutonium you can remove it and added the, if I can find, yeah, that's it. Added the parts where the Mr. Fusion, and of course, you can also add the part, the pole, like that, for adding the, grabbing the lightning bolt. And the minifigs, are also from the Lego idea set, but they are more actual, let's say, uh, this is a Marty McFly, more politically correct, more vertical impaired than the one from the set. The new dog from the city sets, great, great addition for the Einstein dog and the plutonium holding by Doc. So this is basically most of these accessories come in the Playmobil uh, set uh, of the DeLorean, and I was try I was just trying to replicate them here. And of course, all of this was um, done digital. Zoom, show all. Um, let me see if I can show you all it's here. So this is was the the tires, the extra tires I was talking about. These ones make the car fly, and these ones are the one from the west. Just these are the parts I'm still waiting for 
on the on the breakwing orders. And I think that's it. I think I can answer some of questions if you guys want about this now. And I hope you have enjoyed. That's been great. Thank you so much, Miguel. We've got some questions in the chat. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Oh, excellent. Good stuff. Um, so. What are you putting? Yeah. What I'm putting to build next? <laughs> uh, well, uh, right now I'm working on the on the mini set for the train weekend from this year's edition. Uh, I think I might have a little teaser for you guys. Let me see if I can find it out. And it's, I think it's the biggest mini set that we have produced. At least in, camp, in pound card. And, yep. Okay. Let me share again screen. So in the time that we're, we can really fly over to join the event, we hope we can fly imaginary. So this is what I'm working right now. That's so cool. And the participants, of course, will get one of these mini sets. That's really nice. Uh, let me check the other questions. Would you ever consider? Yes, I. Uh, okay. Um, would you ever consider moving to use Studio? I do use Studio. Uh, all of my renders are done in Studio, of course, because LDCAD doesn't uh, allow to do renders. Um, studio is a great package, a great suite package, uh, and they were heading the right way. We had the fortune to have Russell from Bricklick in the, the Fan Weekend edition of 2019. And we, he made a, a presentation about Studio and he was very eager to hear uh, about the users. And we gave him some, some hints as well. And, but uh, then the Lego company happened and they purchased Bricklink. And the suit was, uh, you know, they were not so eager to share their information and to change directions. I can understand that completely. Uh, but I think, like I said in my presentation, that they should consider moving it to open platform because everyone has to gain uh, instead of, uh, of keeping a, a closed format. Studio is great for the beginners, I think, uh, because the co controls are very much user-friendly. Uh, I use LDK because of the powerful that the suite is. I can do, I, for instance, can choose uh, several parts with the uh, LDCAD and make it uh, with one click into a submodel. And then that submodel can be used in several steps of all, all the builds. So it's very much more powerful than Studio. But I do use Studio, especially for renders, as I said. And next question for Chris Arpin. Yes, uh, can you recommend uh, any good communities of like digital for Lego designers? And there are several in Facebook, several not communities, but several designers. Uh, I'm thinking of Brick Active, for instance, by Lucas, a Polish guy. Uh, he has some great models and some great era cars. Uh, but the main uh, source, you, you, should, you should have here two things. One is for builders and the other one is for developers. So the main source for builders in digital, you should look into Bricklink Studio. There is a, the Studio Gallery. There are several uh, models there that you can or you can't download. It depends on the, the uh, IP properties and all Bricklink sees if it's an intellectual property or no. And, and of course, there is also um, Brick Vault and, and there is another one. Let me do it. Rebrickable and uh, rebrickable, of course, rebrickable. And but also our platforms where you can purchase uh, instructions and 
often you get to, to receive the digital file as well. But uh, the main for the main forum for uh, digital Lego design is of course LDRO forums. They have a, a forum and they have the platform where you can download all the libraries and all the parts. And I don't know if, if Oliver is a, Oliver Gertz is making a, yeah. Yeah, Oliver says that it was uh, impressive fast all the software uh, loaded the massive castle. Yes, that's one of the reasons that we are using LDCAD. Um, the UK based uh, company Bright Bricks, they do several huge constructions of bricks. And I'm pretty sure that one of the designers of Bright Bricks also uses LDCAD uh, because, of course, Studio, like uh, Oliver says, is struggling to open the 1200 pieces model. Oliver, you could try to do something. If you already have the model to, uh, done in digital, you could try to disable the snap, uh, the parts snap, because it will make the, the loading of the model much quicker. Okay. Any instructions or is it creating LDCAD? No, I'm sorry, Orla, the LDCAD does not create instructions. Like I said, uh, I use Studio for creating instructions. Um, and until now, uh, I used to, I tend to use LPUB, which was really uh, a very old software and it, with re it was written of problems. So I switched it to Studio and it's way much easier to use Studio. Um, you find it difficult, it's just a matter of practicing and you see that Studio is really quite easy to use for producing structures. Uh, yes, uh, Oliver also asks us about Donald Duck. Uh, the Donald Duck is, uh, it's really a mod, it's not really my idea. It's a mod from Jerak, I believe. Uh, Donald Duck instructions, but I can post here uh, all the instructions that I've made. I used to tend to, to put them on available or but I'll, I'll leave here the, the, the instructions for the Donald Duck car. Let me just see if I can find them. Let me check the next person, please. Yes, Kaz asks about the property file format. <sighs> it's a property file format, uh, but it, of course, um, you can open it. The, their file format, their, their IO files, it's really just a zip file uh, with two LDRO models inside, some images for the thumbnails of the file, and it's password protected. So if you have the time <laughs> and you have the right tools, you can crack open the files. And I can, I don't know if I can show you guys this. Um, let me share the screen again, because it's very easy to open an IO file. Um, yes, here it is. And if you find out the password, you you even see that it's it's a good password. So let's see if I'm going to. I think you are all seeing my screen now. Uh, for instance, here. So I'm going to copy this file to a temp file. I'm going to change the file extension to zip. I'm going to open the zip, and as you can see, these are IL draw files, and this is just a, a it's password protected, of course. I think it's this one. Yeah, see? So it's just a zip file with the files inside. And if I open, if I, I think it's this one, model two, because model one is just a primitive. If I open this file, model two, I'm going to pass it to the, I think I have to share again the application window. 
So now I'm going to open the model two that was in the inside. There he is. See, it's not correct colors, but you can also do a color correction. But there he is. This is the file that was inside the studio. And I, th I see no reason, like I said, for Brickling to have this, this password protected files, this format, because it doesn't make any sense. Once the, there is something, imagine that it was in the Lego company that they have purchased it, Brickling, but it was some other company, uh, I don't know, Plan or something like that. And they wanted to keep that files to themselves. You cannot open the files that you have produced with the studio. It doesn't make any sense for that. And, and Gary, <laughs> yeah, um, it will, this is not regarding, I'm going to reply to Gary, this is, um, this is not about the presentation, but um, the, the, the quarter fan weekend will go ahead. Uh, we're pretty sure of it, not in, of course, in uh, like a physical event, but as a virtual event, we're working some details on that. We are trying to do something like this, what right, for you guys on Bricks at Home are doing. We think it's more, much more fun to do it live, even with the hiccups with the, that the presentations may, may have. And I apologize for my hiccups. <laughs> it was too, too much to handle. I am usually on the other side, like Graham and Richard Carter are <laughs> organizing stuff and not doing the presentations. Uh, but I think it's much more fun to do it live, even with the hiccups than having just people watch videos that were pre-recorded. Uh, Graham, did I miss any questions? No, that's all of the questions that we've had. Thanks, Miguel. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much for that presentation. It was absolutely thank you for fun. having me. I think people are going to have so many useful um, tips and ideas that they've picked up from that, and hopefully some people who haven't tried using digital tools before will yeah, feel a little bit more confident to give it a go. You could try, yeah, and I, I don't get the, you know, unhappy if you don't have the right uh, results at the first time. For instance, LDCAD has a very steep learning curve. Uh, it's a really powerful suite, but it's mainly uh, command centers, and uh, it's not like studio, like just drag and drop parts and stuff like that. But it's really, you could, you should insist if you grew into digital, you should insist. Uh, I just show you small models. Um, I can show you um, for for you guys who have been to to Bricktastic uh, the, the the last year that it happened. Um, you might have seen. Let me share this again. Sorry. You might have seen one of the. Um, one of my displays there, uh, the of the Second World War displays. Uh, so it's probably here in Google Drive. Yeah, in this place, and it's it was all done. I'm going to check. We should have scored actually. Not this, a happy moment. Yeah, this one, but it was the other one, I think. Yes, this one. So I don't know if you remember to see this in in Manchester. Um now I'm going to show you the, the digital bills. It's not all because I I quit before the instructions is in works in progress is diorama. Oh one other thing for Oliver because he was uh, I'm opening now another large model. This one has 18,000 parts. So it's all done in digital and you can go inside each details. Okay. And again, back again for to the church, for instance, you can see the inside of the church here. Let me see if I can get the, the roof of the tower off. Uh, oh yeah, but it's still, I can show you guys, there is a bell inside, but it's on the roof and staircases, not here, I'm sorry. But you can see it's what all done in digital before. 
And it, this really helps because I'm not near my stack of parts. I'm more than one hour drive away. And it helps me to get this uh, digital bills first. And then when I have the time and then when I have the opportunity to be near the parts that I have and see if they can, well, if what I have done digital can be really produced into real bricks. And uh, what I was saying to Oliver, um, this has 18 parts, this model. But if you look closely, I still have all older models open on LDCAD. I have not closed, so it's still occupying. So you have the Donald Duck car, you have the DeLorean, you have the, what's this model two was the, and the castle is somewhere up here, perhaps since, since, you see, they are still here. So LDCAD is really a powerful suite. And if you want to try it one to be more professional, I would advise to use the, 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 the stadium is still the year as well. I would advise you guys to use the LDCAD. Um, I was supposed to give you guys the instructions of Donald Duck. Let me see if I can post the link here. And Donald Duck car. Yep, yep, here it is. It's a really simple build. So copy Dropbox link. There it is, and I'm still looking to find the original, the original design of the Donald Duck, done by Jalek. I, I think it was his name, but I have here the information. Oh, it's few. saved. It's in, in the chat now, the link for the Donald Duck car. We can't actually see that yet, Miguel. Do you want to just make sure that you've um, shared it with everyone? Oh, of course not. <laughs> I just did it to Gary. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's something that's happened a few times over the weekend. Well, there it is. Fantastic. We've got that there. And I was really hoping to find the original one. I can't, sorry guys. That's no problem. It, it, it's, it's an old build from 2016, I believe. Perhaps in Flickr, but anyway, it's, it's, it's just, if I find it, I'll post it on chat. Yeah, since we have to move along to the next presentation. Yeah, that would be perfect. Just yeah. pop it in the chat as soon as you- uh, Oh, found it. <laughs> I found it, here it is. I'm going to put it on the, yeah, Lego Jalex, that's his name. Okay.